So in my view, the big, big shift, paradigm shift that's taken place in the world and also in our society is a shift from the analog to the digital. The shift from the industrial society to the information age. And that shift is characterized by the emergence of digital media. And in the center plank of digital media is what we call social media. Social media is not owned by anyone. It's owned by society at large. It's what is called the public sphere, what Plato and others have called the public sphere, or Habermas has called the public sphere. The equivalent of that in the digital space is what we call the social media, where people can congregate, they can discuss, they can debate, they can um, argue, and they can arrive at their own views. So that was the democratizing uh, role of social media. And this is unprecedented in history. The problem, though, is that social media is also getting vitiated, not only in the margins, but also towards the center. A lot, when we say disinformation, when we say mis misinformation, when we say post-truth, when we talk about defamation, when we talk about uh, hate speech, hate campaigns, all these are also taking place in social media. Communities are being divided, communalism is being sowed, uh, poison is being served on a daily basis, also because of social media. And yet, I think in the balance sheet, social media has the potential and the role and plays a role of being a great democratizer, a leveler, in terms of information to the least common denominator in society. And in India today, of course, earlier we used to speak about the digital divide. Only some people have access to digital technology, others are left out. But that is changing very fast. The fastest growing sector in the information uh, you know, area is digital media. It's not print or television, it's, it's digital media. We have already covered, I think, in India, almost 50% digital reach. Other countries are far ahead of us. China is ahead of us, US and other places, Scandinavian countries is 70, 80, 90 percent. But I think we'll get there. It's the fastest growing sector and we'll be there within a decade. Which is why bandwidths and social media are very, very important for social campaigns, for social awareness and to make for a more informed citizenry. Because ultimately, a good democracy depends on how informed the citizens are. Democracy is not, not just a matter of elections. Even Hitler was elected to power. You need informed citizenry, a critical citizenry, a, a citizenry which believes in the right values, which believes in inclusiveness, not in exclusiveness, which does not other you know, minorities and so on. So social media has that power of running campaigns. And the lesson for us in Kerala, where we have seen such campaigns taking place in the physical space, is that you can shift this into the social media space. A good example is K-Rail. The amount of disinformation and false propaganda and unnatural fear that is being whipped up in the name of K-Rail creating genuine confusion in the people can actually be countered through a positive, through a coordinated social media campaign. The, you cannot depend on the mainstream media to, because mainstream media is doing precisely this. They are creating all this care because the role of mainstream media is to create care so that they can get TRPs. You know, they used to say about Hitler that in normalcy and nothing, in chaos a titan. Because normalcy does not help fascists. For instance, today, today we'll find fascist forces which are ruling the country. For them, normalcy means they, they, have, they have no business. They need to create chaos. They need to create confusion. And for that, the mainstream media is by and large going hand in glove with them. We have seen much of the main, mainstream media in India has laid itself supine before the, before the uh, Sangha Parivar and before the RSS and you know, forces of the right, as it were. So the, to, to counter that, you, 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 you cannot counter that with big corporate money and interests who are all seem to be with them, you can counter it with the far more democratized and far more pervasive and far more prevalent and far more powerful and put, you know, potentially very, very, uh, shall we say, transformative media like the social media. So that is the power of the social media. And I think therefore social media is doing more good than bad, although we must, as I said, a word of caution, be careful about always verifying all that comes on social media because social media is like a wildfire. If you put out some false news there and it starts a multiplier effect, you can it can create a huge damage. So there needs to be self-regulation, there needs to be filters applied and there should be a system of creating uh, a social media regime, which is why I think in the context of the party congress, I would urge, I would urge, and I would think that uh, the, 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 the congress should actually apply its mind to how there can be a new media movement, a media reform movement, which privileges the social media, because that's the only way to counter the vested interests that are facing us, that are threatening us in the form of the traditional, uh, the mainstream media, at least much of it. There are honorable exceptions, much of the traditional mainstream media.